Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Uh, in this one it's slightly different than what I normally do, um, in that we're going to be looking at a camera and repairing a camera that didn't really work that well. Um, this is a Canonet QL19, so this has the uh, rather nice 45mm 1.9 and the problem with it is, although it works fine in manual mode, um, these cameras are auto or manual. Um, shutter priority, you select the shutter speed, and the camera, oh, there you go, will select the aperture. But unfortunately, the light meter in it did not work. So, the first starting point is obviously the battery. And this is... The battery housing, as you can see, there's quite a bit of corrosion in the bottom there. And this camera, the positive, which fits on the outside, and it takes a whopping battery like this, which is only one and a half volts, and it's a huge battery. Uh, this is, what is it, an OR50, um, one and a half volts. Uh, sits in so the positive is the bit around the outside and the negative will be the wire on the bottom and the wire on the bottom is actually the problem it comes down into here and unfortunately a it's very short and b it's somewhat corroded you can see that the green um, corrosion isn't just on the ends of the wire it's actually underneath the insulation and it passes right the way up through it. So that's the issue, I think, with this camera. So to trace where it went through, I mean, it's quite a bit of disassembly. So with my trusty plastic, so as not to damage the leather wrap, can that focus on that? Yeah, not really. Seems a bit of fluff on there right next to the camera, you'll be able to see it. Gently peeling back the leatherette, and that reveals there's a screw here, and there's another screw at the top up here, and on this side, doing the same thing, gently peeling it back, there's a screw here, and a screw there, and doing that. And also removing the top cover, there's three screws, one on the end, one in the middle, one at this end. Remove the rewind crank, remove the advanced mechanism and take off the top cover like so. By doing that, that enables us very gently to take out the lens. And you can see the state of it in here. Um, it needs a really good clean, particularly this back here. The shutter and the apertures work fine, it's just it's incredibly dirty. This is just old age. This is 40 years worth of crap, to be honest. So that's the back of the lens. That's the front of the lens. Obviously this all needs cleaning as it's going back together. So here we have the bare chassis of the camera. You can see in the front. And actually here you can see uh, where this wire is and I'll just dig it out with these pair of tweezers this is the wire and I don't know whether you can actually focus on that but the green actually is underneath the insulation um, I have peeled it back a little bit but this would sit down into here and connect onto the back of the camera obviously it feeds around this area here feeds around and feeds down into the back of the battery the whole camera body is effectively positive and this is actually the the negative of the battery so this wire follows around goes up around here and i believe it's this wire here so if I wiggle this wire here and pull it, you can see the wire jiggling, so I'm correct in thinking that. Now this is the meter needle. What this camera does is it displays the aperture inside of this rangefinder. This is the rangefinder. 
section. This is the rangefinder window, and this is the image from the rangefinder. This is one that reflects it through this mirror and provides you with the rangefinder square in the middle. But along the way, it also picks up from here an aperture scale, and that's what displays on the bottom of the screen is a needle that moves across between 1.9 and 16 or 22, I can't remember what the aperture goes down to on this thing. Uh, goes down to f16. So, because it's not working, I'm assuming that this this wire is the defective wire. This one here. So I need to find some way of checking that. Um, I say that is the correct wire. That's where the wire is going to. So, what I'm going to do to see if my premise is right is I'm just going to tuck this wire out of the way because I don't really want it getting in the way of the, uh, the lens going back in. So I'm just going to, he says, try and tuck it out of the way down here. It's nice to have a meter working. Yes, I could have used the camera um, with a handheld meter, but it's quite nice for things to work properly. And it also gives me a chance to look inside and also to clean the rangefinder. Um, but a little bit of distilled water on a on a, a good quality cotton bud, or um, whatever the Americans call them, Q-tips. That's the word I was looking for just to clean um, the, these glasses in, inside. This cover, again, will unscrew on the top of this so I can get access in here just to clean. I'm looking at the rangefinder window. If you can see it, there is quite a lot of dirt on the rangefinder window. So just a little bit of deionized water on a cotton bud to clean all those optics up to make it nice. Right. The light cell is actually on the front of the lens here, and that's going to connect to the camera somewhere between here and here, I do believe. This is a flash sync connection which goes into the shutter. All of this looks like mould almost in there is going to need clearing out. And again, this lens, I can actually get into the back element and clean it when it's like this. This is what your camera looks like. It doesn't look quite so attractive when it's in this state. So, we've got to try and couple this back up, and I can use the remainder of the stickiness of this just to hold that in place so that the connections from the light cell are correct. Okay, can you see that? Yep. Right, this is the top cover because this is the top of a biscuit barrel to try and save my back. So there's our light source. So now I need a source of power. Um, this battery that came in the camera has also got corrosion on it. So although using the meter it says it is one and a half volts, I don't think it's got any oomph in it. I think it's got enough oomph to power the voltmeter, but not enough to power the, the cell in here. Now we know that the negative, uh, this is a similar battery, this is a, a wean cell. So the positive, like on the other battery, is on the outside, and this is the negative on the inside. So if I hold this, let's come around the other side of the tripod. Try and not knock it. I'll take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing. So if I hold this battery against the metal here, that means that the positive is then connected to the uh, the body. And hopefully you can see. You can't see because my hand's in the bloody way. I'll turn it around that way. Obviously, this is providing a source of light. I'm at ISO 400, by the way. So, 
the body, even this part here is positive. There's the insulator and there's the negative in there. So if I hold this against the body, and then if I connect that from there to the negative, you can see how the needle moves. So the light meter appears to be working, it's just that it's not getting any power because of the state of that, that cable. So, and obviously that is displaying the aperture in the, uh, in the viewfinder. Now if I change the shutter speed, if I make the shutter speed lower, the needle should move further along the scale. So if I come down uh, two stops, so we were at 500, I've come down now to 125. Do exactly the same thing. Touch the battery against the, uh, the earth. And then, there we go. So we can see the needle has moved further. So obviously that's more of a, a, an open aperture than the... Uh, than it was at 500, that's two stops difference. So the meter appears to be working, it just seems to be a power supply issue relating to the condition or the age of this wire. You can even see on this that it's green at this end as well. So that wire we need to replace, put the camera back together whilst we're going to clean it up, etc. We can recalibrate the, um, the range finder if it's out. And I'm presuming with this potentiometer on the top, we can also adjust the exposure meter so that it's reading the correct exposure. So in the part two of this, we will, uh, we will do that. We will put it back together and we will change that wire. And uh, hopefully then we'll have a working meter in a working camera and uh, that should be very nice, I think. And they're nice cameras and they're quite easy to work on and uh, not too complicated but yeah batteries if you're not using a camera please take the batteries out of them because if you forget about them in a cupboard somewhere the batteries corrode and they cause no end of problems and i suspect that's what's caused this is battery corrosion and it started down at this end you can see down here it's quite heavy corrosion i think i can probably re reuse this um, I've put a new wire on this end of it because I was playing around with it earlier. But I think I can probably reuse that. I don't know whether I want to use these sort of batteries or if I'm just going to change the battery holder and put a normal wing cell battery in there. Um, I'll have to see what voltage they're actually supposed to be, whether they're 1.5 or 1.3. But yeah, if you're not using a camera, please take the batteries out because the corrosion starts. And once the corrosion starts, when the battery starts leaking, this isn't actually too bad, I've seen them a lot worse than this. And uh, yeah, it's working its way along the wires even, because there's a charge there. And uh, the corrosion's worked its way along the wire. And uh, renders the camera inoperable. In this case it's rendered the metering inoperable. The wires are very, very thin, but you can see that they're, they're not silver or anything like that. They're, they are a, this is, I've removed insulation from this wire and you can see it's just in a terrible state. It's very, very brittle and the corrosion, like I say, is underneath the insulation. So I'm going to pop a new wire on there and uh, clean all this area up. And uh, I think the camera probably needs a good clean inside as well. Yeah, and then we'll put her back together and uh, she'll be back as a working usable camera rather than being thrown in the tip or scrapped or whatever. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in part two when I show you the camera and we'll put a test roll through it etc. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, comments, all that good stuff and I uh, hope to see you in the next one.